If only they knew the hub for young business minds. Right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the If Only They Knew podcast. Today, I'm joined by Sabrina Stocker, candidate on The Apprentice 2018. Sabrina, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited. Thank you so much for having me here. Good, good. So, so the, the premise of this uh, podcast, we'll start off uh, in your early life, find out what school was like for you, and then literally go all the way up to where you are now and what you're looking forward to in the future. So if you don't mind, let's, let's get cracking. What was you like as a kid? What was a young Sabrina like? What was young Sabrina like? Um, well, I did absolutely every single um, early, well, every single extracurriculum um, school that I could have, like good thing that I could do at school so I was there in the morning playing volleyball and um, at lunch I would be as you know playing cricket or football with the boys <laughs> After school I was doing something I then go to my tennis practice so I, I kept really really busy um, yeah, yeah. and I enjoyed it when I was young and I think my, both my parents are teachers as well so I had like the, the teacher parents when I was growing up and they didn't push me in a sense of like being pushy parents but they gave me the opportunity to try different things, um, which I'm really grateful for. Nice. So you, you said you was quite good at school, straight A student, yeah? Yeah, straight A student. Um, applied for, I think, Oxford University. Yeah, applied for Oxford, didn't get in. Um, but Why was that, if you was straight A? Um, was... I actually applied for geography, and they told me that I should go and study economics instead, because okay, they didn't yeah. think I'd have to know about geography. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, to be fair, you know, I'd never planned on applying to Oxford anyway. But yeah, I was a straight A student, um, got full marks in a lot of my A-levels. So it was a bit of a brain box and a bit of a geek. Yeah. What, what did you want to be? What, like, did you have a profession in mind? Like, obviously, you wanted to stud, study geography, but did you have like a... Um, I didn't really want to study geography, to be honest. No. I just didn't know what I wanted to study. I always knew that I wanted to start a business, but I didn't think taking business at a degree level would get me anywhere because it's, it's very general concepts um, and it's not actually going out and doing something. So I didn't know what I wanted to, to study. I went from wanting to be a physicist to wanting to be a lawyer um yeah wow. <laughs> it's very very random well i think that's important to note though because you're obviously successful now but a lot of young people will be panicking much like we probably was not knowing what we wanted to do so I, that's quite refreshing to hear that you was in that same position as well yeah i mean i don't think you can know what you want to do like i'm i'm 24 now and i don't yeah. have a clue what i want to do and most 30 and 40 year olds don't know what they want to do there's a kind of a stigma in society that we should you know have a certain way of being but it's actually it's okay to not know and what you have to kind of do is to create the most amount of options for you and then at least you've got the options there but if you don't know what to do then don't stress like just take your time find out what you like doing I think the main thing like you touched upon there is get some experience get some stuff under your belt you know uh, you did Young Enterprise as well. You did all the sports. What was Young Enterprise like? How much did that help you? Oh, my gosh. So Sarah, um, who won the previous year on The Apprentice, had yeah. the same business idea as I did in my um, Young Enterprise uh, scheme when I was 14 years old. No way. Exactly the same idea. I was like, oh, my gosh, should have come in earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so annoying. I, I did Young Enterprise as well, and I think mine... It wasn't sweets, it was popcorn, like flavoured popcorn. So we, Oh, we, that's uh, a good idea. I like yeah, that. It was dirt cheap. So like the money we was making, like probably should have should have got stopped early doors. Like I literally took about a couple hundred quid from that. It was that's it was good. Uh, you know, that's really not good bad. profit margins. Yeah. So that that definitely taught me a lot. Um but whilst it, whilst we're talking about that young, young stage, early stage, what looking back, is there anything you sort of wish you knew at that stage that set you up for now or um, I think I would have started earlier is my biggest advice. Mm. Like the only thing I, I don't regret anything in my life apart from not doing things earlier. I wish I started TikTok ages ago because it's so <laughs> much fun. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it'd have been more of a baby boom then, whereas now I'm trying to play catch up. So my biggest kind of, when I look back at things is why did I not start this earlier and take the risk earlier? I've, I've seen you on TikTok. I tried it. I actually don't know how to use it. Like, I actually feel ashamed because like, I feel like I'm quite young and like with the trendy stuff. 
but honestly, I don't know how to use it. There's so many options. So maybe you'll have to teach no, it. Like, I, I didn't know how to use it a week ago. And <laughs> I kept knocking on and I kept having to go. And I was like, oh my God, I just don't understand this. But you, you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so at, at young age, obviously, you was doing young enterprise age 14. You went through school, good grades. You, you was doing pretty well. You was on the right track. How did you fall into your tennis company, company, My Tennis Events? How did that sort of come about? So I actually used to um, have a part-time job when I was 15 and I used to run tennis tournaments. And there was this one week where we made about 8K profit in five days and I got paid 150 quid. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Um, so I just didn't to do it. And then when I started tennis coaching, I just wanted a way for all of my local kids to have a way to compete. So I didn't start the business in the sense of this is going to be a money making business and it's going to expand and you know run loads of tennis tournament. I started the business because I wanted more kids to understand why they were learning tennis. Because you turn up to a tennis lesson, you play tennis and they leave. They don't understand that the reason why they're playing is in order to compete. So the whole business grew kind of by accident and really organically. Um, so it was never meant to be a business. It was always meant to be, you know, a passion on the side of something that I was doing already. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I believe on your website, it was you, you mentioned that pretty much anyone can start a business in an organic fashion. You know, you don't have to sort of really sort of think about it and overdo it. You can start it organically and sort of, like you said, just let it, let it, let it happen. A hundred percent. I think the biggest reasons why people haven't got their own businesses is they're scared to start or they don't know how to. Like my tennis company, I started with like nothing. I used my own trophies and medals and I gave those to the kids. Um, I used the tennis club's balls and I did a profit share model. So I was never out of pocket. I'd always have the cash flow coming in before I had to pay anything out. Um, I think by taking the first steps, at least then that way you're trying something, whereas not going for it at all, you don't know if it's going to work or not. Uh, whilst you, because you started that at an early age, is there any advice that you could share for people w with a startup business? Um, I would say do as much as you can and be extreme. Mm. If you are following your competitors, you're always going to be one step behind. You need to be the leader of the industry. And the only way that you're going to be the leader in your particular niche is by doing something that no one else is doing. So what exactly would happen in an ideal world and how can you make your company be the one to do that? I because think, there's always going to be someone better than you, but you've just got to be quicker than them. Yeah, exactly. I think especially now with social media and like the impact it has, I've seen so many people, even if they don't have a, a really good business model, like just putting themselves out there and you, you can make the business look fun and people will buy into it, whether it's your personal brand or just the branding and the image of the business. But you can sort of almost force it or fake it in a, in a nice way. I think, I think like faking it, I think is overrated um, because ultimately if you fake it and then you don't deliver, then you've completely lost your client trust. Hmm. I'd maybe rephrase it in the sense of, um, you're never going to be the best at what you do, but people buy into you because you are more than something compared to everyone else. Maybe that's because they don't know about your other competitors because they're not doing as much content. Mm. Maybe that's because they're more fun and you're more exciting to listen to. Maybe that's because they just like your persona and you, they think, you know, I want to go with this person because I like them. You're never going to be the best in your industry, but there's going to make, you need to find whatever makes you, you. And that's what people buy into. How important do you think personal branding is in today's world? Um, I think it depends, actually. Like, I think personal branding is so important, but it depends on, you know, what the product and the service is. So if you're, for example, doing machine manufacturing, your personal brand, it, no one cares, you know? Yeah. They just want to make sure that they have a, a good process and a good system. Whereas if you're trying to be an online PT, your personal brand is everything. So I think branding depends on what kind of industry you're in. Uh, quite a sort of open question, but do you think that everybody can be successful in some way? Um, I think it depends on what they see as success. Do they see it as monetary success? Do they see it as happiness? Do they see it as being content every day? Like for me, 
I'm successful if I wake up every day and I'm excited to do what I want to do and I go to bed feeling like I've achieved something, no matter what that is. And that's my measure of success. Whereas it depends on the way that you look at it. So I'd say more around the definition. Yeah, I, I think to, especially in today's world, like I said, with social media, a lot of people I've, I've, I've noticed, even like with myself, I get my success mixed up with someone else's and I want to sort of emulate someone else's life. Like, have you sort of had that at all with your, with, with your own self? I mean, everyone compares their, themselves to other people. Like, it's inevitable that you're going to compare yourself to other people. But actually, as soon as you stop comparing, as soon as you stop giving a shit what other people think and you just do something, then you're going to be happier. You know, three years ago, four years ago, I was saying, my friends were saying to me, why are you not going straight to university? Why are you working on a Friday and Saturday night? Come to the pub. Like, why are you doing all of these things? Whereas if you just go out and do it, um, then it will happen. So and if you compare yourself to other people, then you're never going to be better than them because you're always going to be one step behind. Exactly. I think everyone's on their own path, which is important to note. Uh, but on your, on your path, we, we, got, we, got, we understand who you are as a young person. You're smart. You're on the right track. You're successful. And now in our little timeline, you've, you've got your business and you're smashing it. And where, where does The Apprentice come into play? Why did, why did, how and why did that come about? So I've always been an Apprentice fan. Um, yeah. I've honestly you know. watched every single episode <laughs> since I was nine years old. Um, and it was the first kind of understanding I had about business. And I always knew that I was wanted to apply for The Apprentice. And I always knew that I wanted to get onto The Apprentice. Hmm. Um, so I actually did it for a bit of fun. Um, <laughs> maybe I should have chosen a better business plan because, like, my business wasn't a scalable business and it's still not that scalable because there's only a certain amount of uh, competing junior kids in the UK. Um, I guess I went on it for a bit of fun and also for, for personal brand exposure. And I didn't know if I'd get on and I thought, well, why not apply and see what happens? <laughs> um, I, I've, like, I've, you probably know this. I already applied for The Apprentice. I went through like the first stages of the audition and the first year I applied, it was, it was so daunting. Like it was quite, intense so for somebody who is about to go through that experience is there any tips you can give them like for that audition process i'd say like it depends find out why you want to go on but also like it's not potluck like i watched the audition videos back from previous apprentice candidates so i knew the kind of questions that they were going to ask so i rehearsed talking to a camera i rehearsed answering the questions that they were going to answer like my personality naturally is quite you know bubbly and quite fun and stuff so I just made sure that that came out across um so I didn't just you know turn up on the audition day and hoped everything was it would go okay I had done that prep work and I don't think you get anywhere unless you have done that prep work yeah I think I think that's a big part of it you know and do, when you went there did, did do you think that they picked you based on like a persona like do you think they liked you as a person more than your business or do you think it was elements of both being really good I think it was an element of both like I'm a I'm a blonde young Londoner um yeah. with apparently a slightly posh accent which I hadn't been told before <laughs> but that was you know I was, I was the blonde girl from London um my tennis business is fun it's exciting oh that's the blonde girl of the tennis business so having a fun business and having something that makes you new, unique I think is what will get you on the show um, but in terms of the actual show itself like we all know it's part business pr pr uh, related but part entertainment purposes how much do you think you really were able to apply your business skills on the show? I think the show is more about being able to adapt to the situation. How can you read a situation? How can you adapt to a situation? And how can you plan in advance? Um, now, when you're running a business, you have P&Ls to look at, you have your accounts to look at, you have staffing and culture. It's completely different to an apprentice task. But I think some of the skills which are transferable is those adaptability because you never know what's going to get thrown at you. Yeah, exactly. Do, do you think the whole process was worth it? Like, what, what did you come away with it? Like, uh, yeah, I loved it, honestly. I had so much fun. Um, I had great experiences that I you know, never would have done before. And I think the biggest thing for me is actually coming away with um, 
so much support and love from Karen Claude and Lord Sugar. And I felt like I'd really be looked after at the process and they stood up for me in a lot of the boardrooms. Um, and Lord Sugar, you know, had a five minute chat to me when I got fired and, you know, he gave me some great advice and basically said, keep going. So for me, they were kind of role models in business and for them to be so positive about the way that I was and the decisions that I made was, you know, definitely a, a motivation. We've seen a lot of people when they're on the show, it seems like they're almost perhaps not set up, but they're not, they're not made to sort of look as good as they probably were. Do you think you were fairly represented? It, you, you seem to do well, so you made it to the final five, so it seems like it. Yeah, I, I think I came across um, definitely a little bit undermined on the show. Um, when I was going through the process, I didn't feel that I was being undermined as much as the show did show that I was. Yeah. However, the show also showed that I was right a lot of the time in the decisions that I made. So, you know, I can't complain. And there's only so much they can make up as well. Overall, I came up really positively and, you know, I had amazing feedback via social media. I have you guys who are watching live now. You guys have been so supportive. So the feedback that I got was super positive. So therefore, I have to be positive about the way they edited me. Good, good. Was there anything that was sort of left out in the show? Like any behind the scenes bits that we didn't get to see? Any ju juicy bits? Millions. Millions of juicy bits you didn't get to see. <laughs> oh, what a shame, what a shame. Uh, but overall, good process. Would you, would you uh, suggest people... Uh, who are looking to do it, would you suggest that they go and do it? Yeah, why not? You've got nothing to lose. So we've gone through your what life was like when you were younger. We've gone through The Apprentice. Now, what are you up to now? So now everything's a bit of a whirlwind. Um, it's great. It's amazing. But it's, it's pretty crazy busy. So I have um, three different projects going on at the moment. So I have my tennis company, obviously, which is currently happening. Um, I have Active Dragons, which is going to be running entrepreneurial workshops for the under 18 markets. Yeah. So we're going to be partnering with schools um, and we're running residential courses and camps as well. So after this coronavirus has finished, um, at least their parents can ship their kids off. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> ship their kids off to me to do some learning. Um, and then finally, I also have the COVID Community Youth Project, CCYP. And what we're doing there is we're bringing all of the uh, recently, well, all the unemployed um, people in the society at the moment, as well as those who have nothing to do because their exams have been cancelled, yeah. partnering those with local businesses who need staff but can't afford to pay them for, uh, for wages to so just pay expenses, and basically allowing an opportunity for those who are in businesses to have lean costs so that they don't go bust, um, but also allow an opportunities for others to learn and get work experience. So yeah. Nice, so you're busy at the moment, public speaking as well. Uh, you're doing so much, you know, and you're also helping the young people, which is very, very useful as we've both been in, in that position before, sort of, we, we, know we want to do more than we're already doing, but just need a, a helping hand. So I guess that's where you now come in for those young, young people. Yeah, a lot of like uh, motivational speaking and public speaking has been fun in terms of getting big audiences to hear the message. Um, and hopefully, if, you know, a few people are resonating with it. And I've had people that I've you know, spoken to, I was going to say friends, but people I've spoken to on Instagram that have started their own business now as a consequence of it. So, it, you know, it is giving actual results, which is amazing. Nice. And when I was looking at Active Dragons, I come across the four C's. Would you mind explaining what they are briefly? Yes. So currently in the education system, we are learned to basically pass exams. And that's what we're judged on. Whereas actually, if you look at the skill sets that we're going to need for the 21st century, um, they consist of the four C's, which are communication, creativity, um, we have critical thinking and collaboration. So actually being able to embed those four C's into everyday learning and into the school curriculum, I think is really important because kids need to learn how to adapt and they need to learn how to think for themselves because the majority of jobs that we have now aren't going to be around in 20 years time. Exactly. I guess uh, uh, the a uh, YouTuber, a vlogger, that they, they weren't jobs that were uh, around like a few years ago. So they're, they're brand new jobs, aren't they? So 
yeah, the, the world's changing rapidly. Exactly. And that also means our education needs to change and it's not. So therefore what's going to happen is we're going to have a generation of upcoming workers who aren't skilled in the jobs that we need them to be skilled in. Exactly. Talking of helping young people, if you had one piece of advice for young people looking to start their own business, what would it be? Um, if you, so what's the question? Sorry. If, if you could give advice to young people looking to start their own business, what would it be? Um, start a business that you're passionate about because ultimately to start a business is freaking hard work yeah. and it takes a lot of time. So you have to do something that you love doing. Otherwise you're going to get demotivated very quickly. Um, but on that side as well, don't expect to see results overnight. You've got to be the best at what you do or at least, you know, as good as you can be, but that takes a lot of time. So be patient with yourself, but definitely find something you love doing. Great advice. Final two questions then. When it's all said and done, you, you've become, you've become even, even more successful than you are now. You've smashed it with all your businesses and your ventures. What do you want your legacy to be? So I, I think being the kind of, with the personality I have, I don't think I'm ever going to be content. I don't think I'm going to be able to stop. Like for me, I just can imagine that once I hit a certain goal I'm just going to want to hit a bigger goal and I I feel like I won't hit it until like I won't be content until I hit it and then I keep going so for me I'm probably not going to stop um but also you know what's really important to me is family and in the next you know five to ten years I'm going to be looking to have a good balance between looking after family and looking after kids definitely and the final question where can people who are interested in your story and watching your progress, where can they go to find out more about you? So um, you can visit me on my website where you can get some business coaching if you fancy it, which is sabrinastocker.co.uk. Otherwise on Instagram, sabrinastocker.r, the same with TikTok and on Twitter, sabs underscore stocker. Perfect. I look forward to your TikToks as well. That's a big point. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to those. <laughs> amazing i'm having so much fun with them like too much fun with them yeah i can imagine well i'll let you go get back to your tiktoks i wish you all the best of luck and i look forward to seeing your progress after the apprentice and how life turns out for you so thank you very much for coming on thank you so much for having me chad <laughs> no worries enjoy your night see you you too thank you bye bye, -bye. bye. if only they knew the hub for young business minds